So this video is going to focus on the sales cold calling process. We're going to dive a little bit more deeper from the previous video and focus more on the routine of what is it that is required when making a sales call. We're also going to focus on the high level between the interaction between you, the salesperson, and the system so you can get a better understanding and a more in-depth understanding of the process altogether. So first of all, the, as I said before, the system is, there's some parts of the system that will be performed manually. There's other parts of the system that will be performed by the system, essentially. These two parts here are controlled or automated by the system. And then the third part here essentially is performed by the actual sales manager themselves. This part is performed by the sales manager. Okay, so your job will be primarily responsible for making the sales call. Okay, once you've made the sales call, again, it's very important that you record the calls. Every call must be recorded. Now, you don't actually have to disclose to the client in this particular case that you're recording the calls because at this particular stage, if the user actually does make a call to us, our, our system or phone system actually informs the user that the calls are being recorded. Uh, so for the outbound calls, you actually don't have to do that. That's not, uh, it's not a requirement, but all calls must be recorded so that the manager, sales manager can actually review those calls and figure out where we need to make improvements they listen to the calls on a daily basis so that we can at least understand what sort of changes we need to make overall. So very important that you record calls all together. Uh, next thing is your job is also to qualify the leads. And what do I mean by that? Your job is to evaluate, have a conversation with the prospect to figure out whether the leads are good. Now, we're not expecting you to go into depth and answer technical questions or into understanding exactly the process or even explaining the process to the customer or the prospect. What we're expecting is that you at least have a general conversation with them to figure out whether is something of or whether the service that you're providing, whether it's software or website, is something of interest to them. That's very important. And you need to be able to gauge that because what you don't want to do is be sending us or the sales manager a bunch of dead, no good leads just because you're trying to meet your numbers. That's not going to work for you. It's not going to work for us. And essentially, it's wasting everybody's time. So the first thing is you want to get their email address. There's a few ways to do that. If they're interested, you want to schedule and you want to schedule an appointment with them. You could word it in such a way to say, you know what, is it possible I could get your email address so I could send you a calendar invite? That's one way to word it. The other way is, is it possible I could have your email address so I could send you some brief information about our products and services? All right, so there's a few ways you could get the email address. And again, I gotta stress this, you must gauge the interest of the prospect or lead. Once you've gathered that information, you will then enter that information into the CRM system by updating that info. So you enter, if you had a conversation, great conversation with caller, definitely interested, suggest that I call him back next week. Put those notes inside the email. Try not to do short form because we are taking that data and we're doing a further analysis on it. Having the short form does not help us and the system. So in other words, don't be do don't do CB for call back. Put the actual full full word call C A L L back B A C K in order for us to be able to uh, see those uh, notes in the in the system and, and do further analysis on it. Once you've gauged the interest and you've gotten the email, your job will be to send the initial email to the prospect, and this is our sales or send info email. You will notice these as templates in the system. These are all preset templates. 
if you had a very specific conversation with the customer, you might want to tweak this a little bit. For the most part, we're hoping that you don't have to tweak these emails too much. You just want to send it out as it is. We're also iterating on the emails to figure out what are the best email based on the, the uh, subject line, based on the body of the email. And we're constantly doing tests, so we're going to be improving. Your job is just to get the email out. Now, once the email is out, your job at that particular point is not finished, but it's on hold, let's say. The system takes over that process of following up, and if they don't hear from the person within three days to send a follow-up email, hi, John, just trying to see if you you know, were able to look at my last email. And then if they don't hear from them, the system will wait for five days, send another follow-up email, if they don't hear from them within this time frame, only then again will the system send you a follow-up phone call. Okay, so uh, sorry, the system will actually add a task so that you can do a follow-up phone call. My apologies for that. Once you've made that call, it's up to you. This might actually happen multiple times, so you might end up making a call following up with that person and you might be iterating on this multiple times. So if indeed you need to uh, follow up more than one time with this particular prospect, then you'll add a task into the system to remind yourself that you need to make that call to that person. If you're not able to reach them or let's just say that the user, the prospect has not said no, but you haven't gotten any confirmation of any single thing, what you want to do is you want to label them as a marketing qualified lead. And what this will do is it will kick off a series of processes, automated processes in the system so that the system will send them some content. And to give some example of what type of content we're sending, uh, we're sending articles. Hey, John, here's a great article on why you should improve your website. Thought you should like, you would like to read it. Right. Um, also, we're going to be sending links to our own blog itself just to see if they're clicking on these links, if they're going to the website to gauge their interest accordingly, and then we'll figure out what is it that we need to do. After that, the system will actually add another task, if it doesn't hear back from the customer, to follow up with the to have you follow up with the prospect. So it's gonna add a task, that task is gonna be sent to you via email and you'll be able to follow up to with the prospect altogether. So that's the, at a high level. Now, one question that always arises in, in a case like this, what happens if the user, excuse me, or the, pros, the, the prospect in this particular case actually responds? Well, once the prospect responds, this pro the system, the automated process stops because it's expecting a human being to interact. And it will be your responsibility at this particular point to pick up the conversation, see if you could book that appointment, that 10 minutes conversation, that 10 minutes appointment with the client altogether. Okay. Now, there's also you, once you've gotten that 10 minutes meeting then you will basically book that meeting it's our responsibility to have that meeting and basically depending on there are the sales manager responsibility depending on where the lead is and, the, and based on the qualifying question we'll decide whether we should change that into opportunity so that's the high level of the sales process and in the next video we're going to go a little bit more deeper into the actual call itself and what it, what a sales process call looks like okay so stay tuned for the next one